Today, I want to start my talk with one fact and one question. The fact is there are 4.5% adults with cognitive disability, and this rate can go up to 9% for the older people. So my question is, is there anything we can do to help by improving their learning ability? From a clinical view, the impaired learning is a common symptom for many brain disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease and autism. As a neurobiologist, I start to wonder whether there is any shared mechanism underlying such a common but a serious symptom. Thanks to much genetic data, we have known a lot of risk genes related to these brain disorders. Very interestingly, most disease genes encode proteins either at the synapse, where neurons receive the information, or in the nucleus, where DNA gets produced. So since many brain disorders share similar risk genes and also show the impaired learning, is it possible that dysregulated communications between the synapse and the nucleus lead to the impaired learning as a common symptom for such disease? Indeed, our experience does have the ability to shape our DNA in the brain. We even know the molecular pathways, which are initiated at the synapse, where kerosene signal influx, and then the signals are propagated to the nucleus through shortening protein to regulate nuclear gene transcription. It's not an our idea to manipulate signaling pathways to improve learning ability. Back to 20 years ago, scientists have made smarter mice by increasing synaptic functions, which learn faster, remember longer, and solve mazes better. After that, more and more genetic mice have been made to improve learning ability. However, evidence suggests such improvements come at a cost that cannot be easily underestimated. For example, such mice have a higher risk for cancers, seizures, and chronic pain. All such side effects are not surprising because both synaptic activities or nuclear gene transcriptions have other important cellular functions. So can we specifically manipulate the shortening protein, which are the dynamic connections between the brain activities and the gene transcription. We apply this strategy to gamma chemi K2, a protein translocated into the nucleus upon neuronal activations. Gamma chemi K2, as a molecule for the memory, has a big capacity for signal transduction because it contains 12 subunits and can be regulated by the neuronal activity. More importantly, genetic data suggest gamma chemi K2 is a risk gene for intellectual disability which often show no IQ and the impaired learning. So is it possible that the mutation found in such human patients if, uh, impairs the shortening function, which in turn affects the learning? To address this question, we use the mice as a model because they share similar learning principle, like neuroplasticity, <coughs> as human. After deleting the genes, encoding the shortening protein, both the mice and the neurons look normal minimizing the concern for the development. We examine the mice using water maze, which is a classic memory test by putting the hidden platform under the water and train the mice to find it. Obviously, the mice without the shortening protein spend a much longer time to find out the platform, suggesting their impaired learning. Consistent with the idea of the disabled communications between the brain activities and the nuclear DNA productions, Indeed, the neurons also lost the ability to send the nuclear signaling de denoted by the red color here into the nucleus to regulate gene transcription or gene expression. Finally, we inserted the human version of the shortening protein into the brain. Importantly, you can see that inserting the shortening protein but not the mutation found in the human patients fully rescued the learning defects. Taken together, we think that the impaired learning in many brain disorders may be caused by a network <coughs> encoded by disease genes. We rescued this by inserting the shortening protein, indicating the chance for improving human learning ability in the future. Thank you. <laughs>